Welcome to my show. My name is Marcel Johnson, and this is The Free Experience. It's a bop, right? It is. It's definitely a bop. What's going on, family, man? Welcome back once again to the Freedom Experience. As you already know, my name is Marcel Johnson. I'm incredibly thankful for you tuning in week after week and just experience growth, transformation. It's been a blessing to hear from everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely a blessing. Today, I got on one of my merch shirts, Freedom, because you know that's what we're about. But, man, I got to tell y'all, like, comment, subscribe to the channel so that you can keep elevating with us. But man, I got to tell y'all, the person who is sitting next to me is somebody who I had the privilege of growing up and knowing and just to see the transformation of his life, how yes, he sir. went through so many different trials, so many tribulations, but yet he still walks around and he's a light. You know what I'm saying? He still lights up everywhere he walks into. My bro's My name, man, thanks. George I appreciate that. Clark. Let's George go. George Clark, G, <laughs> whatever is better for you. Yeah, we call him G. Everybody calls me G. Yeah. George Clark's good too, though. Whatever. George, whatever. Matter. George is more like the businessman, kind of like uh, Clint Clark, like Superman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and George is really for the professional life. G is for if you know him. You feel me? Exactly. <laughs> But, man, I got to tell you, I appreciate you for coming you on the show. Know, you know what I'm saying? You know, Definitely hold it down. I'm Definitely hold just... it down for my brother always. That's what we do for each other. Yeah, time. period. So I want to introduce you correctly. So father, business owner of a lot, <laughs> and also music artist. <laughs> yeah. And I got to man, I gotta say, my bro wasn't always into music. Not at he all. always danced and cut up and just had a good time. But when it came to making music, that was something that was different for me to even see you do. But I'm excited because it's like another level of freedom and exactly. another way for expression for you to express yourself. So how did you get into doing music, bro? Music it was kind of one of those things where with my brother, he, yeah. he was incarcerated Shout for out a long Vaughan. time. He did six years in jail. He came yeah. home in 2017. He decided he wanted to do music. So yeah. me... As a bigger big brother, I'm, I'm going to make sure my brother's good. So I ended sure. up doing it with him. He did a couple projects. I jumped on a couple tracks, just messing around with it, having fun. Next thing you know, I said, I might as well do my own track. This happened about two <laughs> months ago. I'm, yeah. You know, and imagine I'm in my mid thirties, and Come I on. decided now this is what I want to do. You know, so you should always do what you want to do is what I think. So something you said was on. just my bad. Something he said though was like he's a big brother. That's his little bro. G was like a big bro to all of us. Like growing up, you always just made sure everybody was cool. You know what I mean? If we didn't have money, bro, we'll buy Chinese <laughs> food, take us out. Like he was always just such a big bro. I always appreciated that oh, because no I problem. didn't have, besides my, my big brother, his name's Ed, but besides him, you always just showed that love and made sure everybody was cool. And I think that that was super solid of you. What oh. gave you that perspective to just, you know what I mean, be an over, a overseer of everybody around you? Well, honestly... Uh, it was just, it's just me being me, honestly. Like, I just always like helping out, you know what I mean? I always wanted to make sure everybody else was good. Yeah. Because, you know, making sure I'm good is one thing, but if everybody around me is not good, then how could I be good? Yeah. You know I what I mean? That. Like, how could I be good? Yeah. If I don't it's, got like, to... it's like a humility. It's exactly. like you was humble a lot of the times to make sure everybody was cool. Even if he had to take the take the back seat, you always let, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, people go in front of you. And that's one of the reasons I think people see you and they'll understand why you're successful, why you continue exactly. to elevate. And I think a big part of that is your humility. Exactly. The fact and that I, you're humble. And also, too, probably it came from me being like the oldest of seven kids, too, you know. Oh, yeah. So Yo, that you got a big, big difference, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean... It was always my duty to do it with them, but then it kind of was something that I enjoyed doing as well. So yeah, me enjoying sense. it, I just ended up spreading it through all my friends too, you know? And How was that growing up? Even though I was kind of around, but I didn't live with y'all, so mm. how was that growing up, being like the oldest of seven? Did you ever feel neglected, overseen, overlooked? Uh, I just felt like there was like a lot of trial and error with that. Like I felt yeah. like, you know, it was kind of like, it was funny watching my mom convert through each of us and learning more, you know, like yeah, as, yeah, as yeah. me being the oldest, it was kind of like, uh, just, she was trying different. She didn't really know a lot of things that she knew as with the other brothers that we had, you know, and sisters. 
I think a lot of times, about. yeah, and I think a lot of times whenever you're a parent and it's your first child, you right. are trying to just figure it out. Like nobody's mm-hmm. perfect. And then you being a father, you right. know what I'm saying, and having kids, now you can kind of see what your mom and exactly. your dad went and through. Like, you honestly, know what I'm saying? She gave me the blueprint, honestly. Yeah. That's, that's how I feel. It was, it was the blueprint. So, bro, so what I wanted to ask you was like, your parents, even though they did great, they raised y'all great. What are some things that maybe they did that you want to say, I'm not going to do that with my kids. I'm going to fix it. Because I think each generation gets better. Well, one thing that I did do, and I feel like this is a big thing for any parents out there, yeah. is co-parent with the other parent. Oh, better, okay. You know what I mean? Don't go back and forth and clash, especially in front of the kids. Don't do yeah. that. That's not a good thing to do ever. You yeah. know what I mean? So that's one thing that I did different. Like with my son, he's 17. You know, I, it was that's my- That's crazy. You got a 17 year old, 17 year old. And I, I was with his mom in high school. You know, yeah. so that was I my high school that back in sweetheart. The day. And we had rough times, don't get it wrong, but yeah. now we're doing great with it. You know, me, her, my husband, me, her, and her husband last year, Yeah, they, we took my son, Sweet 16, New York, all in one car. Oh, one yeah, I remember that. Y'all had him in a limo yeah. and everything. Yep, had him in a yeah, limo it was and everything. Lit. And it's so much better for the kid. My son says it all the time that all of his friends don't have that. You know, wow. they're all so confused that they're like, how? How is that happening? You know what I mean? So I feel like that's very important. Even with me having full custody of my two daughters for the last seven years, right? you know, their mom hasn't really been around like how she how she should be but i don't i don't want to talk about her in no negative way around the kids that's one thing you can't do you know because at the end of the day that's still their mom you know yeah so she's in town right now she hasn't been in in pennsylvania in two years yeah in cali and and my kids are with her and and her sister now come on shout out to the moms that's struggling that maybe isn't really able to be in their kids' life because of the attacks and the stuff they're going through. We love them too, man. And I love the fact Definitely. that you hold it down and you be so solid to look after the girls and raise right. them despite what their mom is going through. And you have the humility to right. not talk down or talk bad about the, the, their, their, their mom. Mm-hmm. And I think in life period, it's not good to just talk down upon, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, your kids' uh mom or dad because it just gives such it makes them actually stop liking you it makes them to right, start feeling yeah. some type of way towards you that's true and once again i think that it's your humility that allows you to be that co-parent right because you humble yourself i remember he had some stuff with uh which would be him bro mm-hmm. yeah. yeah he had some stuff with her she tried his life a couple of times y'all tried each other's life uh-huh. but you always found a way to humble yourself right. you know what i mean and lead with love and right that now would, you know I, I, like i can say i i wouldn't want it any other type of way you yeah know? I'm glad that we are able to do that. We are able to do things together as a whole. I mean, if when my son went to homecoming, yeah. she invites me over. We all take pictures together, you know. Come on, I got pictures family. with me, her husband, and my son, and that's it. You know, not even her in there. I, I talk to him sometimes more than I yeah. talk to her. So, look, yeah. let me ask you this. If you could tell somebody y'all hung right now that has a difficult baby's mom, baby's dad, or whatever, what would you say to them? Tell them right now. I would say just lead with positivity always. Don't yeah. fight fire with fire, honestly, Ooh. is what I would say. I would say, yeah. um, you know, if you do things the right way, God's going to make a way. Come on. And uh, especially if you if you lead with positivity, it just makes the situation better. Because negativity, all it does is drain you and drain that person at the end of yes. the day. And it's never going to make it better, no matter what. That's what I said. See, man, this is what I mean. Bro's mentality has always just been to to come up higher. And this is how I knew that God was always with you. Because you always was like, you avoided the conflict and you always just chose to come up higher. That mentality, you know what I mean, definitely came from God, bro. And a lot of times people say that, you know, like I I, I got a cleaning company. That's one of the the things that I'm doing. My first commercial contract in 2014. About a year or two ago. One of the ladies there said to me, she said, George, I've never seen you come in here with a bad day, ever. Come on. And even if I did have a bad day, they didn't know. You know, I didn't bring wow. that type of energy to the workplace, ever. I always went in there, I was always smiling. They said, you smile every day you come in here, you're yes. smiling. You come in here, you greet everybody, you, you got a big cheese on your face. And I feel like the cleaning company is so competitive you Come know? on, yeah, so, be real. Um, honestly, every year they got to put in bids and make yep. sure, you know, and pick who they want. And, who they get the contract yeah, with. And, and that, that kind of is why I still have that contract. It's the energy I bring. So yeah. always remember that. Keep positive energy. It, it goes a long way. It goes a long way. So I want to say, because that's what I was about to get into next was a lot of the entrepreneur and a lot of the business stuff. What gave you the desire to become a business owner and an entrepreneur? 
Uh, honestly, what gave me the desire was a, a, a miss, a, a little step backwards that I had to take. I mean, yeah. I, I got a DUI in 2011, and I was yeah. already on probation for some marijuana and stuff I was selling and playing with back yeah. in the day, and I had to go to the county jail for three months, and yeah. I had to sit in the halfway house for four months, and I worked for a cleaning company, and my positivity, it, it showed there. I was going and I was, you know, buffing floors and positivity. They kept writing <laughs> comments. Hey, you know, George's energy, his personality. Oh, we love it. We love it. We love it. And it was just like, they're like, why don't you, why don't you have your own company? They kind of inspired me. And I'm Look like, okay. God speaking to you know, people. So when I got out of the halfway house, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this myself. You know, because I've seen a lot of things that I would do different. They were sending us to these. And this is why um, that they weren't used to having people with positive energy and a lot of right. people weren't taking it serious. A lot of the times being that the contract was the family dollars. They wanted you to do it when the store was open. Right. And uh, there was a lot of like people and, and a lot of the machinery that we were using was making loud noises, hardly working. And I was still just do my best. You know, I would sleep yeah. up underneath the shelves and do like little extra stuff when most of the people would just come in there, run the machine real fast, not care if they miss the spot and get out of there. That's what I always yeah. tell people. Like you got to do something in excellence and you have to do it with significance. Like you have to stand out, do your best. And then do it in a way where you stand out. And his significance and his right. excellence was doing it with love and doing it with that positive energy. I wanted to ask you too, like, to back up a little bit, what are some of the things you learned in just transforming? Because like bro said, he was into a whole different lifestyle, you know what I mean, wilding and just being out here. But he transformed his mentality through your hardships. What are some things that you learned in the process of that? Because some people at home are right there where you were at. What are some things you learned that you could share? You mean as far as when I was... Just your whole past life, like that whole mentality in before you went to jail, selling drugs, being uh, just wrapped up in the streets and having your mentality all messed up. How were you able to like learn? What did you learn from that? Well, one thing I always realized is nothing's forever. You know, cool. um, you know, there's always a chance to, to start over. There's always a chance for growth. Come and, on. Uh, that's one thing that I really learned real big is... A lot of that stuff that I was doing back then, yeah. I mean, times change, you know, it, it's, there's a lot more uh, technology out here. That's right. There's a, lo a lot more ways to get in trouble nowadays. I mean, technology's only getting better in any way you look at things. So it's always going to be, there's always room for advancement, basically. Basically like redemption, there's always a way to turn your right, your wrongs into rights. Always. And I love, there's a Bible verse that says, God has a way of working out all things right. for your good. That means your good stuff, your bad stuff, he's able to transform it and make it all come out to still be good for you. And that's basically, you're an example of that, right. how God used Definitely, all that stuff. Honestly. And matter of fact, bro, I wanted to talk about, because this happened to my bro a minute ago, but whenever you were like drinking and stuff, right? right? And then you end up getting real sick. Like bro was sick, had to go to the hospital. You spent like weeks without eating, you right. know what I mean? And basically God caused you to have like a transformation that God made you go through. Right. Sometimes God will make you Honestly. go through stuff unless you just willfully go through it. If you just die to yourself and willfully go through it, right. it'll stop him from pressing on you. But what is the thing that, like, explain to the people what happened and what you learned from that? Well, first, I, I was honestly, I was like, okay, I want to start with the studio. I want to, I want to do some different things to this house. I want to, yeah. my very first investment property, I wanted to make it into my cleaning company office, built yeah. a studio there. I had a vision. And in the midst of me trying to do this, I got really sick. So it was like he was telling me slow down because at the time I was still like drinking and going out all the time. And yeah. I didn't really have the mind to really get the vision that I really wanted for it. Mm. So in the midst of all this, I, I got really, really sick, long story short. And yeah. I, I was in a bed for 13 days. I couldn't even drink water. Everything that I would put in my, in my, in my mouth, I would throw it up. I mean, Crazy. I couldn't hold down anything. And then my mom, thank God I had her. She was there every step of the way. She uh, she made sure that, I, that yeah. she was trying everything. She was bringing me, tried the brat diet. I tried everything. None of it would work. The wow. only thing that would stay on was Similac. I don't understand <laughs> like why that was. And uh, hot tea. That was it. Wow. Other than that, I, could, I lost 27 pounds in 13 days. I had to go to the hospital three different times and get IVs because I was dehydrated. Cause, and I was still going to work. You know, I was still going to work through this time because that being self-employed, sometimes that's what you got to do. do. You can't it. find somebody. The person that normally would work that building for me happened to be out of town. It was like all this was happening to open up my vision, too, as well. You know, and after after about day nine, I was almost like over. I was over it. 
I, I didn't eat for nine days. I started like getting depressed about it and everything. And my mom came to me and she said, hey, uh, God told me he wants you to watch church today. And she sat on my bed at the end of my bed and turned on the church. And it was like, he was just talking to me, you know? Next thing you know, the terrors just started coming out. It was yeah. like, everything just, I just felt it, you know? And it was like, he was talking to me, honestly. And, uh, wow basically telling me like to slow down and I you know I, I got to the point where, of a breaking stage where I was like apologizing like I'm sorry that because a lot of the times like as you as you heard me keep saying I did this I did that I wasn't really giving God his glory mm. so I was like kind of always talking as if everything like I did this all by myself yep. I started from the bottom I made it here I made it here yep. I was never ever saying even though I knew deep down that it was because of God, I never ever was saying that when I was explaining my story or wow. nothing to other people. Wow. So I was like apologizing for all of that. I was apologizing for being on social media so much and, you know, being kind of, I felt like I was being more selfish because I was always saying I on social media. Come and on. I was like telling him I was going to stay off of social media. And he was kind of telling me like, be yourself. He was Come like on, telling be me, free. be yourself. And, and stay on social media, but just, you know, let people know, you know, that this, this was me. Yeah, be <laughs> you free. Know? And, and honestly, it, it was like after that, it was like another level unlocked, you know, like yeah. when you're playing a video game, it was like next level, you Come know, on. and more and more blessings start rolling. And I just got pre-approved for a mortgage, you know. Um, Come on, bro. To it. I mean, I've, I've been doing real estate. I, yeah. I do have five, six previous properties, but, you know, the mortgage thing is a lot more difficult. It, it involves your credit. It involves your work True. history and how much money you were bringing in. Yep. It was like next level unlocked. You know, I, I started my studio. I finally had a vision for that because the music, when I started in 2017, it was just me keep dumping money in, dumping money in, dumping money in. I really That's didn't. Right. I tried to do the merchandise. That worked a little bit. Right. But it wasn't really, there wasn't really no increase of income. And That's then the right. studio came into my head, but it was like before <laughs> I did that, it was like he told me like, boom, and put me and told me to slow down for a while. And he opened up my mind and then I really knew exactly how I wanted to do it. You know yep. what I mean? It was like the vision came clear. I, I, I knew I wanted to, I wanted a studio, but I didn't know how, I didn't, I just knew I wanted a studio. <laughs> and what's, cra it. what's crazy about that is like, bro, you just dropped so many gems about how like whenever you're so confused and you're just so over, um, over stimulated with technology and mm -hmm. with all these different things, you really can't hear what God's telling you. Nope. And God was trying to really bring you up higher. What people don't know is, when God wants to talk to you, a lot of times you think he's going to condemn you. He's going to judge you. But really, he wants to clean you off and bring you oh, up higher so that too. you can shine more. That's what happened to him. And he, God wanted him to do it so much that he had him to the point where he was sick. I remember talking to you and you being like, I was praying. I was crying out to God. Like, why are you doing this to me? Mm -hmm. But throughout it all, God transformed you and he mm -hmm. brought you up higher. And you do got a ton of businesses. You do do a ton right. of different things. He's a real businessman. He's always been on his grind. But as y'all can see, he's always like personable. He's never like egotistic. I would have never right. thought that he had ego issues because you don't come off that way, bro. Right. But God said, it's time for you to give me more of the glory. Right. It's exactly. time for you to That's acknowledge exactly me in this. And it started even before that, because honestly, before that in November, it was yeah. the weirdest thing. I just kept seeing my my birthday's 311. I just kept yep. seeing 311. Remember I was telling you about that. Yep. I kept seeing the number 311. That. And uh, I was reading about it and it was kind of telling me, because I always knew that, I, like, I don't know, even with my brother, even though I I wasn't doing music myself. Yeah. It was like always what I liked doing more than anything yeah. else, like dealing with the music. The music and it was artistry. like when I was reading what the angel meaning in 311 was, yep. it was, it was telling me a lot and I couldn't really figure out what it was saying. What it was. Yeah. It was like all everything came clear whenever that happened. You know? It was crazy. When I think about it now, we used to be in a car freestyling, mm -hmm. rapping. All like that was something yeah. we always we did, used to do yeah. was just freestyle rap, listen to music. So for that to be something that I never thought of that as like a hidden talent of yours, right. that now he's actually getting a studio. There's a studio called, uh, what is it in Pittsburgh? It's uh, ID Lab. Shout mm -hmm. out to E. You know what I'm saying? We both be down there, but right. you literally put something that was inside of you, found right. the freedom to mm -hmm. now express it. Exactly. What was that like? Because being in your 30s and trying to become a music artist, a lot of people might doubt you. And right. just in life, period, people might talk about you, doubt you, judge you. How were you able to persevere through people's opinions? Uh, honestly, I say, honestly, I just, uh, I just decided Come I'm going to do what I want to do. You know, Bruh. What, you know, if God has it in my plan and I feel it through him, Come on. then I'm just going to do it. That's, how, that's where I'm at in life now. I'm not worried about what anybody else thinks or nothing. Because honestly, 
the, the, the two chains. He's forty something years old. He was yeah. in his late thirties, early forties when he made it. I mean, there's no age on anything. It's all about how you feel. You could do whatever you want at any time. There's people to go back for the nursing license to be a nurse at forty, at 60, 45, 50, 50 yeah. sixty, whenever, whatever age, and and they're successful. I mean, anything. There's no age limit for anything that you want to do. Is what I is what I feel. I just feel like if you got the energy to do it, and God's letting you go ahead and do it, do it. And I think a lot of that fear that comes from what people think about you is really rooted in childhood rejection and childhood issues. And I know we all face childhood traumas and stuff we went through. What are some of the things that from your childhood you felt like you had to deal with or you're still dealing with that still kind of, you know, what I mean, might be a battle? Uh, honestly, the driver's license situation. Yeah. I mean, I like I, I got an underage drinking at the age of 19. Yeah. And um. At the time, I was selling weed, and I was able to pay the fines. I just kept paying the fines, and then <laughs> realized it was pushing my license back a year, a year, a year, a year. Wow. Next thing you know, my license has been the 10, 15 years. Wow. You know, and uh, that was something that always came and kept biting me yeah. on my way to success. I was, everybody seen, nobody seen that part because they just seen that I was elevating because I was, everything was going up, but I still was dealing with the driving thing. Wow. I still might get pulled over, and nobody would really know that I have a license, and my car is getting to you know and, and i was like i think that bro that's like a generational curse that right. god is calling you to break like the right. drinking and drugs and different stuff like that and i think we're all trying to break through generational curses Definitely. that the generation before us didn't really break through it exactly. so it's like what's your journey as far as breaking not just the drinking but just other generational curses how do you apply that like what are some things that you do to try to step forward at? even generational wealth Right. Like we grew up in poverty, but look at, you know what I mean? We have right. money now and we're persevering. How yeah. do you like take the step forward and trust God to help you in that process? Well, honestly, uh, with that, I just kind of, I always knew, you know, especially me having three kids that yep. I wanted them to be in a better situation than I was in, Come on, you know? So one thing that I did, even, even though I'm only 35 and a lot of people won't do this at age 35, I made a will, you know? Wow. I mean, everything you know I'm, I'm trying to make sure everybody and, and it's not even just for the kids i mean it goes there's there's stuff about my family in there other yeah. family and stuff too if something happens it, it might go to my mom until they turn 18 and yeah it, thinking it's ahead things thinking ahead is yep. always good you always got to plan for the future and one thing even when i was one thing even though when i was out here slanging yeah and while that i wasn't supposed to do Honestly, I always knew in the back of my mind that it wasn't forever. I always knew that eventually that I had to do something, you know, and it, it, it took me for me to go to jail to really actually yeah. decide to change everything around. But some people don't have to wait that long. You know, you can do that now. Exactly. You don't yeah. have to go through the traumatic yeah, experience to. to change. It's kind of like you. The traumatic experience could be you just dying to yourself to go to another level of freedom. But what role did God play? in your situation like how would you say he really helped you or what role would you say for people who don't have god and they're like i don't believe in god or something like that what role would you say he helped you and played with you like helped you pull pulled you out of something honestly um he helped me a lot because when i think about how how many times i used to ride around with stuff in my car and Come on. The cops were behind me or i would even, maybe even get pulled over and for some reason they didn't search that time or anything Ooh. it was that, that was god that wasn't that was an accident you Come know on. what I mean? There was a lot of times where it could have been worse. Like, you know, a little bit of trouble I got in, I, I should have been in way more yeah. for what I was doing. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So I felt like he always knew that that wasn't what he needed for me. That wasn't, you know, he was trying to keep me out of that. Yes. And, and the only reason I made it that far was because of God. Honestly, I'm telling wow. you, there's no other way. I mean... I, I believe that too, and it's because he helped you too. And, and I believe. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I, I believe that, he, that another part of the reason why he was like that yeah. was because of how I was with other people and did right by other people. Come as on, well, you know, the love. Yeah, the love. It's like you always genuineness. showed that love, and God's like, you know what? I'm gonna use him. I'm not gonna let the devil get to him right, like that. Exactly. I'm gonna bring him mm -hmm. up, and I'm gonna use Honestly, him to come on I'm something serious. like the Freedom Experience to come and showcase freedom and love. You know what I'm saying? And growth and transformation, so that you could be an example for other people honestly and that's just crazy bro that's how you nothing. navigate through that and do it and i know like you're doing that through your music and i wanted you to like spit something for us like spit something for us that you know what i'm saying is just you know what i mean like hard and some stuff that you're working on there was like some uh <laughs> there was like a little something me and my brother were working on we were okay. kind of talking about 
the pants in there and a little bit of stuff. Just and, give uh, me something real quick, a little eight bars. I, I, I came in. I, I probably got a couple for you. Come on. Let me hear I, something. I said, what I said? I said, I've been out here grinding since like the ninth grade. One thing on my mind, I had to get paid. Hey. When you're dealing with pain, just know it's going fade. Mama raising me right. She told me, get safe. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, that was a little, that was just a little sound that I had Mama, said. Mama, bro. Because one thing, you know, they, Come they on. Were, you know what I mean? That's that was one hard. Thing. Yeah, like, that's so funny. You said mama told me to get saved. And what's so crazy is it shows your transparency. Because Definitely. we just went through a whole story about how your mom was like, I feel like God is talking to yeah, you. Yeah, it was so weird. I mean, so your lyrics is weird, like a reflection of what you really believe and what you really right, feel. Honestly. That's true honestly. music, bro. That's a true music artist that takes their life experiences, put it through music mm -hmm. to be able to help other people. Exactly. Wow, bro. That was fire just now, bro. Appreciate it. Okay, that. so when I is some mean, new music yeah, coming yeah. out, bro? Uh, I got a project dropping out, dropping on 1111. 1111. Uh, my soon. dad's birthday. Okay. 1111, 21 i got yeah a, i got an album dropping first tape on well, mr george's birthday yep, on my shout out mr birthday, george yep. he's hard <laughs> and uh <laughs> that's that's whenever i got the next that's the next big thing that i got going on i love that um How's the properties and stuff? Oh yeah, the rental properties. I'm yep. doing that too. That, that, that's a, that's a like once again, nothing's going to be easy. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, you got to deal with different personalities, different tenants and stuff. Yes. But with God, He'll always get you through it. And one thing I'm blessed about is, I had, I got six properties. I was living on one, renting out five. One thing throughout the pandemic, yep. He allowed everybody to be able to pay the rent. That's right. That was that was God helping me because honestly, without that. I don't know what I would have did. I mean, I got the cleaning company, but the real estate is kind of like the backbone. That's yeah, that's like, what sustains that's, that's you. keeps everything together, right? Yeah, I so. love how you brought up the pandemic because a lot of people think they only look at the negative aspect of the pandemic, right. but a lot of the blessings came in the pandemic. Definitely as much as too. God says we're sin abound, grace abounds much more. Right. So all of that stuff was bad, but God was in there much more. Right. I know I was blessed. My dad passed away in the pandemic, but yet I still came out with a lot more blessings. And right. I love that you brought that up. So the pandemic was not a blessing to you but it was bad for what it was but it, god still found a way to bless you in it definitely man. that's Honestly. a blessing and then i love the fact you brought up it's hard work you have to deal with different personalities that you might not want to deal with right. what helps you stay so consistent and so uh determined and disciplined to be able to be this business owner you are honestly uh it's just it's just the drive in me i think i Come think on. it's just something that's just embedded in me i mean i've always been I, I had my first job at 14. i mean yeah. i just always wanted to keep moving forward i worked from 14 to 19 straight yeah. and then i decided oh i want to sell a little bit of weed and <laughs> when i started making more Facts. money off of that i didn't work from 19 we keep to it so bro i love this show so much because like we keep it so real right, like exactly. nobody has to hide you could just be so real and be exactly. regular i love that but i think that like if somebody was at the crib right now and they're like Man, I want to sell houses. I want to open up a business company or I want to open up a studio or something, but I don't feel like I have the drive or I don't have what it takes to do it. What would you tell them? What encouragement would you give them to I start would definitely, that business? I would definitely say just just do what you what you want to do. Keep yeah. just keep your mind in it. If you keep your mind in it and you keep working towards it, it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, if yep. you, you can work at the dollar store. That's but there's it. a lot of stuff out here that's materialistic and the yep. internet and everything is clouding everybody's mind i mean because yeah. honestly if i could have did it differently i wouldn't have sold weed because i'm like once again I, I, I got a record from that you know yeah there's something that ended up on my record and i and a lot of people don't realize that i mean i'm talking about all this good stuff but i do still have a record but That's you can right. still overcome that wow. because honestly you know i'm doing well with the record you wow so there's show? hope yeah, even there's so hope. that's what i yeah, mean even when the devil meant for bad got you a record got them all jacked up yeah. you know what i'm saying you as god was able to finesse that and still make it work out for your good one thing you said was even if it's working at the dollar tree our dollar store i think that like just do what you can. Right. Don't always think like you got to do all this stuff. Just do whatever, Don't let whatever you can. Social media get to you either. I mean, social a lot media of this stuff's not real, anyways. Yeah, it's so, all fake. You know like most I mean? people exactly. on social media are showing you all the good stuff. And, and that really... was a blessing that I didn't have to work. That, that was one thing that the 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 youth has to overcome more than we did. I mean, yeah, Instagram sure, and all that. It came about in about 2011. You know, yeah, by that, that time I was you know in my mid 20s. 
I was glad that I didn't, I mean, because right now I just came from parent-teacher conferences and all they kept talking about <laughs> wow, was my daughter bro. won't stay off the phone. I'm like, they have their phones in class. She's like, yeah, we, wow. we let them sit where they want. They get it on their phones. It wasn't like that whenever well, we were in school. Yeah, so like, facts. I feel like, um, just, you know, try to stay, keep your head out of that and just stay true to what you're trying to do. If you, if you want to yeah. do a certain thing, be the different person that's not in their phone in the class. And it's like, God will help you. This is why I love God so much. And people be like, you know, Marcel, like they always put me in a place where they're like, you love God and da da da. It's like in no way, shape or form am I saying I'm perfect, but I love God because he really does help. Like yeah, he really he helps really you. He's like help. a father that he helps does. you. And it's like, no matter what your goal or vision is, when you really are doing it, like you said, and giving God the glory for it, right. he'll keep lifting you up higher because it's bringing him more glory. Exactly. That's what it's about. The fact you just said you want the parents to your conference, bro, bro <laughs> like, <laughs> like that has me weak because at the end of the day, I can't believe that like exactly. you're a parent of kids that you have to go to parent teacher conference. So what are the ages of your kids, bro? 17, 15, 11. I started early. Like I said, I'm in my mid thirties. Seventeen, fifteen, and eleven, bro. So, what is it like raising teenagers? Uh, it's 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 a task. Cause you're still like a teenager, honestly, bro. You're yeah, still a big yeah, kid. Honestly, How do you real. keep that? Like, well, first let's I answer think, that. I think that honestly comes from me having the kids too. Okay, you know, I mean that that makes a big difference. Uh, me True. having kids, it, it it makes it easier for me to just. Stay kid. I got to keep up with them, you know, yeah. so it makes it easier. Is it hard raising teenagers versus raising, like, kids oh, in, like, definitely. grade school? Definitely. Wow, what are because, some of the challenges? Uh, well, teenagers, one thing about them is they want everything you want, so. <laughs> <laughs> they think they, <laughs> they grow. They get more expensive, you know, I mean, it's, it's a task, I mean, because you got to deal with different personalities, you got to deal with hormones, you got to yeah. deal with periods you gotta yeah. deal with a lot of different things that you know than just wiping wiping the baby it's, it's a big yeah. difference when you when you're dealing with teens you're dealing with which, which one adults. would you prefer the teenagers or the because teenagers could be a vab too where yeah, they can help you and just i think they both got pros and cons okay. i mean like now I, I don't have to find a babysitter every time i gotta leave the house you know <laughs> so that's a good thing yeah but in the same token i gotta worry about who they're going to try to bring in the house when I leave. Yeah, <laughs> facts, bro. Because you know how you was in high school. Exactly. He yeah, was in everybody. I'm thinking. I'm, I'm, when I was my son's age, I was making my son. So, exactly. You, know. you feel me? So the fact that you got the... I love that, though, bro. I love seeing the growth and the child, like... You know what I mean? Personality. I know there's another Bible verse that says in in, uh, in order to enter into the kingdom of God, you have to be like a child. Right. And I think, like, you are able to possess that childlike mentality. And it's not childish. Childish is different than being right, childlike. Child, childlike right. You know what I mean? Childlike is like you still handle business, but you know how to keep that innocence, that pure, that fun, that energy right, without exactly. being too serious. And I think you do that so good, bro. But I got to close the show out, man. I always like to ask people, what are your words of wisdom? I always like to end the show with words of wisdom. To be able to just say a mantra that you, you know what I mean, can give to the people, something you stand by, live by, that helped you grow. What One is thing it? that I always stood by and live by is be yourself, always. Mm. Be yourself and always just do what, what it is that you want to do. Like, because you could do anything in life. All you got to cool. do is believe in God and just stay positive and it's going to happen yeah. and that's one thing that a lot of people say to me they, they tell me a lot like you know you always said that you were going to do this and that and you made it happen wow. it was god but it happened wow so stay be true yourself. to yourself stay true to but you be yourself what is um, the importance of staying true to you uh, the importance of it is just you know it's, it's easy to get off track basically if you don't stay true to yourself yep. so you got to always be yourself be a be a leader not a follower because when you stay true to yourself and be a leader, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. And sometimes it can be hard being yourself because you're scared of being judged. But guess right. what? They won't judge you even if you're pretending to be somebody else. So be yourself and just be free. Find freedom. And you can find this merch, too, on my website, MarcelJohnson.com. I had to plug that in real quick. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know what mine is, man. I always like to tell y'all that this is my words of wisdom. This is what I say every show because this is what I believe. It's time. Find freedom. It's fan time. God. Fan God. <laughs> fan God. Yeah, it's time, fan freedom. It's time, fan God. Mm. Because, man, it's so important that you fan God because within fanning God, you fan freedom. We love y'all. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>